Hello everyone, this is Ron from iTech Legion and this is part of a review of the Gigabyte GA990FXA UD7 motherboard. This is actually the revision 1.1 of the motherboard, an update from the original 1.0 version which lacked load line calibration functionality. Here you can see it is a traditional BIOS since uh, it doesn't have the UEFI functionality, but it does have the hybrid EFI 3TB uh, plus support. You have the first tab here, you have the MB Intelligent Tweaker, which you can access to adjust most of the settings you need to overclock your 990FXA UD7 motherboard. You can see here at the top of the CPU clock ratio. I have here is the latest uh, pile driver processor from um, AMD, which is the FX8350. As you can see here, it reads it as a 4 gigahertz out of the box automatically. You can set it uh, to different values with a clock ratio in there from 7 all the way down to I think 40 check uh, go down here and see where the 40 can go um, 35 so you can see that it goes all the way to 7 gigahertz of course that will require a lot of cooling and you can also adjust uh, just using your page up or page down you don't need to enter that to uh, revert it see there uh, once you go back to the lowest one it goes back to auto and north of the frequency same thing you can adjust there Core performance boost. Uh, in other words, this is actually the turbo. If you're looking for the turbo, as you can see that it boots. Uh, the turbo boost, turbo core boost is 4,200 megahertz or 4.2 gigahertz from 4 gigahertz. You can disable that. If you're overclocking, I would suggest disabling this one. Uh, core performance boost or turbo core. You have the CPU host clock control and the manual set. As you can see, the grade up bottom at the bottom has been adjusted. You can adjust the CPU frequency here for the, if you can see on the right side, it explains that FSB ratio is the operating frequency. PCIe clock, HD link with HD frequency, uh, DRAM OECP, let me just go back and see this again, go back. Uh, you can see here with other, which other options are, are, uh, are not grayed out anymore. You have the DRAM EOCP, which is exact, uh, essentially like uh, if you're familiar with Intel, they have the XMP profile, essentially is similar but it, you can set you can see it reads the profile at the bottom there of what RAM you have and also it can set the EOCP for the other uh, values for uh, multipliers you have the 1600 all the way to 2400 which is the maximum for this motherboard and you also have the memory clock as manual set you can also have it automatically uh, the manual as you can see as a memory clock if I press enter uh, you can see the, the various dividers there but uh, Times eight, of course, is for the 1600 megahertz, and the nested option below that is for adjusting the uh, timings. Now, this is what I like about this one is that you also have the access to the CPU host clock at the top within this nested option, and you can also set the memory clock here. I set it to manual since you can see at the bottom I have adjusted it. The best thing about it is that you can see uh, while you make adjustments on the left, you also have the SPD and the auto timings being read, read on the right side, so you don't need to go back. Uh, some biases, and especially the older ones. Uh, from AMD, you have to you have to uh, go to a different page, on a different you have to go back up page or maybe write it down on paper and then look down again. And here, the the SPD value and automatic value is being read uh, right beside it, so you don't need to uh, go back up to make those changes. Uh, make your changes right here, as you can see there. And you can also ch uh, change to engage or engage mode. You can tie the two uh, memory controls together. More options at the bottom, although these are not the voltages, it's just more advanced options for for uh, memory overclocking. Let's go back up to the top. You can see here at the bottom you just all the voltages. See if I if I set this to auto, you see everything's grayed out and you can't go down. But you set to manual, you see there everything is uh, it shows you the uh, similar to the uh, to the memory, you have the voltage current voltage on the right shows you what the normal is and you can adjust them uh, you can press enter similarly you can go down although in some of them you can input it directly for example this is DRAM voltage you can input um, uh, the voltage directly make sure that the, you press the num lock for some reason this BIOS version I am using actually the 10E beta F10E beta for the latest compatibility with the FX8350 that I'm using here but if you are, uh, they should be able to fix this in a later version. Usually, uh, numlock is on in most uh, uh, in most biases, so it's easier. So you can see there. If numlock, once you turn numlock on, make sure you can type 1.65 directly or whatever value you need instead of uh, doing it 
instead of scrolling all the way down, scrolling all the way up, there's a lot of values in there. Although some voltage won't let you, for example, the CPU voltage control is basically an offset. As you can see there, you can't type it in directly since it's not a value like the one you see in the memory. It is basically an offset from the norm. And this, uh, this changes depending on the other values that you made, of course, uh, makes, that's why it's, they put it at the bottom. Uh, for example, you adjust, you disable the V core, or rather the turbo core, this will be a lot different uh, values compared to what you see here with the plus 5.125 will be a little bit higher. And uh, let's put it back to normal, which is, go back to the zero there. As you can see, it shows you the grayed out bottom. It shows you the normal CPU V core is 1.425. Let's go back up. Next one is the standard CMOS feature. You can adjust the date, the time, and if you have an IDE mode, uh, which is the default for AMD, uh, you can uh, set the CD hard drive installed in there. And the advanced BIOS features here, you will disable some of the, if you're overclocking, you can adjust the load line calibration. Uh, it's set to extreme or ultra high uh, for five gigahertz plus, I recommend. Uh, the, this, of course, was not available in the version 1.0 of this UD7 motherboard and is only on the updated hardware and the updated BIOS. You also have here the C1E support. You would disable these. One of the values you would disable when you overclock. And a C6 support and a VT support. Notice that uh, the core control is also in here. So it is all basically all the options you will disable since uh, the bulldozer processor or the and the power driver processor as well. They respond very well to overclock if you disable some cores. So uh, AMD actually put them in here in the uh, award software bias, put it in here with the other options that you disable so that it's only just like a one-stop shop for you to uh, make those changes without going back another nested options under the CPU. So that's a very good layout they have here. After that, here at the bottom, these are more options here you can disable for, uh, of course, cool and quiet, uh, master mode for application power management if you're not using AOD, CPU core control as mentioned. And here at the bottom, you can adjust your uh, boot options, hard disk priority. See there, I only have one. SSD, I have one SSD plugged in, so it's all not reading multiple devices. You have also the FICD boot option. Uh, of course, this is essential. You want to enable this if you have a larger than 2.2 terabyte support or 3 terabyte support. However, uh, it is indicated in the manual. You also have the uh, boot device priorities here. You have first boot device, second boot device, third boot device. Even includes uh, other other drives that are not even installed. For example, the zip drive. I don't have that. Uh, I'm not, I don't have any CD-ROM installed, so uh, there's plenty of options there. You have the password check, you can set it up. Uh, by default, of course, no password. Hard drive smart capability, disabled by default, but you can enable it for reading the uh, reporting, your hard drive reading or errors, uh, also monitoring your drive's health activity. Away mode, you have, uh, of course, it's for, only for Windows XP Media Center Edition, so uh, I'm running Windows 7, so not, not a concern for me. Full screen logo show, this is actually the uh, there's a splash screen at the bottom before you even enter the BIOS. Uh, you can disable or enable that here. Of course, it's enabled by default. IO MMU support. And it display first. Uh, here you can uh, set, you, know, you, have, you can see uh, the PEG stands for PCIe graphics. You have the five PCIe Express lanes in there or the PCIe slot. Uh, by default, it is a PCIe which is detected. Uh, it tries to detect that first. Um, if it has a graphic card installed and it goes through the rest of the list depending on your uh, your setting you can adjust this however you want and the next option is the integrated SATA option uh, integrated peripherals option in here as you can see uh, as an on-chip SATA controller enabled or disabled once you disable it it will uh, you can see there it is everything's grayed out right underneath that if you enable it as you can see it reverse back uh, by default these are the default values native IDE if you have an SSD, I would suggest HCI and because uh, it's a higher performance than native IDE. You also set it to RAID in here. And also you can see that SATA type is only affects the first uh, the first port and the port four to five actually has uh, IDE as separate. You can set it, set it separate compared to the HCI that are in the first uh, SATA ports. But you can also enable it as SATA type if you want to run this as, as SATA. And uh, you have here the uh, SATA 3 support, of course enable it, SATA 3 6G, for the ESP, set that, of course for, for the HG, a hot plug icon in the OS, if you want to enable hot swapping option in, in a SATA, optional ROM invoke order, you have the uh, front panel USB control, you can see that they, they indicated as F, 
uh, USB 3.0, eSATA and GSANA. These are powered, of course, by the Marvell 9172 chip. Uh, there are two separate chips. There's two eSATAs in the back, SATA 360, and the two gray SATA 36G ports right above the additional, uh, right above the uh, the AMD SATA ports. You also, adjust the onboard PCIe devices. It's a nested option. You can set option here, smart LAN, onboard LAN function and the audio functionality. You can disable more functions, of course, if you want uh, more stable overclocks. Some people re uh, recommend disabling cert, uh, some devices which you don't require. Functions here, legacy function control. These are, of course, all default values except for the AHCI, which I just changed uh, just to demonstrate it. And next option is the power management setup. You have all the options here for your power. You can see HPET support enabled by default and PME event wake up enabled by default. You have AC power, power on alarm and ERP support is disabled by default but you can enable it for less than one watt standby. And uh, back up here, PC health status, basically uh, it, it allows you to control the fans and uh, also the, it shows you the status uh, of the system temperature. See there the CPU fan reads at 37 degrees. A CPU temperature and shows you the fan speed. It's correctly plugged in. And also adjusting. You can see uh, there is no system warning uh, enabled by default, but you can make these adjustments depending on the uh, the value of the temperature. As it reads next. Uh, the ones here on the right side. These are more for the fail safe defaults and optimized defaults. Of course, whenever you update your before you update your BIOS, before you install a new CPU, you want to always reset the BIOS defaults before and after you have done that. Uh, before you continue on, supervise your password and use your password, of course, if you are an administrator. Save and exit setup and exit without saving to standard self-explanatory self -explanatory options if you are going to uh, continue on with your settings or uh, just cancel the settings that you have changes. Also at the bottom, you can see there are shortcuts. Escape to quit entirely F8 for the Q flash to update the BIOS. You have the F10 to save and exit setup for a quick save. Also F11 and F12 to save CMOS to the BIOS and F12 to load CMOS from the BIOS. And that pretty much covers the overview of the Gigabyte GA990FXA UD7 version 1.1 motherboard BIOS. And uh, you can read the rest of the review at www.hitechlegion.com. You can leave questions or comments below. You can read the full review through the link below and thanks for watching see you next time